All right. That was a bug. That was a bug that knocked out my last video. So rarely happens in Warframe, but it does happen. Sometimes someone, some other player, or some other network screw up your network, or there's a random bug. But it rarely happens in Warframe. When it does happen, it only happens every once in a while to a player. But when people say it happens a lot in Warframe, it really doesn't. Bugs might happen every now and again to a single individual player. But bugs don't really happen that much in Warframe. It only happens every now and again when you're playing. Like if you go for more than an hour in Warframe, you can go for a smooth run for more than an hour in Warframe. And all of a sudden a bug pop up out of nowhere. But it's not like it happens every day. It only happens every once in a while. Like certain other games where bugs happen all the fucking time. Ridiculous. Like for honor is always fucking crashing. I'm sorry to curse and stuff, man, but every every damn time it's crashing in for honor. Like energy pad. Get that up. Our energy tires up. Now we'll see the drain. Now, as you can see, it's draining extremely slowly. This is what I was looking for. I knew it was the duration. I knew it was the duration. I knew there was something going on. First, I thought it was the mission doing the drain. But I realized Valkyrie requires duration, efficiency, and strength. For her to work good. Not so much towards strength, but more towards duration and efficiency for her powers to wait to work without slow drain. I mean, without fast drain. See, look how long I have it Area on. Completed. It's not even a halfway point yet. And I don't need to even have it on for this long. She only put on our care for it. Essential. Here is a terminal. Get me in and get ready to deploy. Like if you know a lot of people in your, your group party is about to die or this your objective is about to be killed, stomp the shit up out of anyone that's within that area and revive everyone within the area before your energy runs out, which is will always happen. Valkyria is like one of the defaults for reviving people. Like, I'll tank all your bullets, pal. Don't do shit to me. Oh shit, my power's came off. Still working on it. As you can see, even the level 60 to 80 enemies can do jack shit to hell once our fourth is on. So you work, you work no matter how strong the enemies are. As long as, um,. You have a decent amount of strength. Um, she'll work against any enemies, even level 100. Killing the enemies is another issue. That's why you require strength for their build as well. Not just efficiency and strength. You want to do fast kills for her as well, not just to tank the Here is finished here. Move on. Like another good indicator when you're playing Warframe is to hear the sound of their shields going down. Once you hear your shields go down, that's a good indicator to throw on her for you. Most wise if enemies are protect around. your avaricious servant. No enemies are around, there's no reason to move for I'm gonna use a rallying war cry at the nearest um, location, the next location. And the defense location. Terminal spotted. Upload prepare to defend. I'm in, Tenno. This will take a moment. By the way, I never spoke on um, enemies in this game. There are five enemies in this game. Corpus, Renea, um, the 
sentinels uh, corrupted and alternatives. It basically, our enemies. Um, We've got signals singing the same song as all the fighters. Specific Careful class now. of fighters. They usually have Still all working on different types of all at the same. Time. All at the same time. Some could have shields and armor. Some could have Who did this um, different them? type of objective in order to kill them. We have to have to die. We have to shoot them. You gotta have find out what's protecting them and then ones. take your shot. But for corpus enemies, you always use us, things Tano. like hammers and stuff. Mission Amazon complete. Flash. If you have a weapon that has impact capabilities, you put it on hammers. And if the hammer has slash capabilities, you put it also on the hammer. Corpus's weakness is impact to their shields and or slash right through their shields. Mostly slash. To cut through their shields, you never have to worry about uh, hitting their shields. It's extremely strong. If you're a slash, it's incredibly powerful. It'll go straight through their shield like a damn sword through butter. Mission complete. For a Excellent butter. work, Tenno. Alright, so what I'll do in the next mission, I'll just mute myself so no one in the party can hear. I'll just say what I have to say and then move on to the next one. So that's that mission. Um, I took a lot of heavy damage and they always take down my shields, but they couldn't kill me because I was the fourth. So I'll try the same on the enemies at the last one. Now let's see what our condition is. Okay, enemy. Um, elemental enhancement. This is what I'm looking for. Wait for this. Yes, this is important. I want to fight over 80 to 100 enemies that are enhanced, which means they won't just be level 100s. They'll be enhanced level 100s, which means they'll be um, have high armor, high shields, and high damage weapons. So we'll see how much we can tank before our NG is out. Um, well put together, operator. Now get out sure. and cut down the and make the Lotus proud. Okay, so I wasn't using. Have you noticed that I wasn't using Prime Flow at all, and it took a while for them to drain my energy. So at least half. Imagine what it would be with 600 and something prime flow. It's a lot. Now, so now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see see how long it took for the, my injury to drain because I have duration efficiency. So what I'll do now, I'll put prime flow on, and we'll see how that works. You don't really need it, but if you really want to keep your fourth ability on for a long time, we'll see how it works. If it's worth it, if it's not worth it, I just know it'll take a while for it for me to get to that 600 marker. It'll take longer than me standing there for 10 seconds. Maybe about 30 seconds before I get it all the way up to the 600. But once it's all the way up to that 600, I could run through the entire mission without giving it another. Um, energy pad until maybe towards the end. 
So you really only need to use two entry pads if you're using prime flow. And you only really need to use one entry pad if you're not using prime flow. Or no entry pads at all if you're picking up energy from enemies. This is just me testing what will happen if I don't pick up enough energy. Will it refill my slot fast enough before I get to the boss? Or do I need to give myself energy before I get to the boss? See how much energy I can get from enemies before I get to the boss. Usually, um, everyone's just going to charge towards the boss. Well, hopefully no one has joined yet, so I'll be able to kill as many enemies as I can before I can get to that boss. We cannot risk Corpus developing more advanced Oh, wait a minute, products. there are already people here. If the Corpus are building newer party. raptors, it's imperative we discuss right. prototypes and their means of production. Where are they? Where are they? Okay, one up. Alright, you're outside the shield. The Corpus are using no, a gravity sure. conveyor system to move product up to the surface. This will be heavily shielded. No energy. Alright. Let me turn my mic off. I don't want these dudes to hear. Almost done. Stay alive. Finish the mission. Take out the rest of the conveyors. Walkers incoming. internal damage to their facility. Keep it. Factory has gone critical. Right work, Tenno. The Corpus financiers will regret their investments today. Now, get out of there.
down. Assassination contract complete. Great work, Tenno. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. And that was Valkyria in a nutshell. Now, as you notice, it takes a while, like I said, for you to resupply yourself with that energy um, with Prime Flow on. So you might well, just want to add right. Flow, some out extra and amount of energy. Like if you're right in the middle of a hectic situation where you have to get to an objective fast, mm -hmm. Prime Flow is not really the way you want to go. You either not have it on at all, or you just have on flow itself. Like if you really want to kill things fast and get it mission done quick, my suggestions have flow on without prime flow, or just have both streamline and fleeting expertise on. Now I was completely wrong about needing more power strength to hit those. Well, not really completely wrong. I, I just I thought it would take more seconds to take down those enemies. I mean, they weren't specialized in hands big boys they were like normal soldiers hands but it took me a lot it took me much faster than six seconds to take down level 100 enemies level 80 to 100 enemies it took me even less than four seconds so i'd say about four damage level at 500 strength like it says here it could kill, it could kill level 80 to 100 enemies in three slashes one two three they're dead as you saw for yourself sometimes even just two slashes but three slashes one two three they're dead and some took uh, like probably more than that but i didn't see that i only saw like one two three and level 80s to 100s were down left and right so you don't really need more than 500 power strength hell you might not even need 500 power strength you might just need 400 just to do maximum of five to six slashes for one enemy. Did you hear that? Now, if you it want quick kills, you need to 500. But Cosmic background radiation is a Now that I know this, you don't need more than 500. Um, you need probably just this on, which is uh, transit 42 on. You need. Um, you probably don't even need these two on, to be honest with you. Just need transit 42 on. Since she, her fourth is what her our saving grace is to keep her away from the death. Based on that little test run, instead of uh, Umbra intensify, you probably just need intensify itself. That intensify, the regular intensify, and then other strength. Put that on. Get that to um. Rather than stay at uh, 235, you could go to 224, and let's see. Yep, and that's a f still at 500. You could keep that on. That'll work. We'll aim it to 100 enemies, and probably even beyond of 100 enemies once you turn on your fourth. And then thereafter, you could go with Vitality. Regular vitality and steel fibers. And steel fibers. Or you can put on umbra fibers and umbra vitality on. Depends on what you want. Uh, let's go with that. Let's take this off and let's try that out. See what we get. That and that. That works. And then whatever you have remaining, put that up here as in power strength. 
And let's see if we're still at 500. I doubt it. Probably at 100. Nope, we're still at 500. And there you go. Problem solved. Situation solved. If you don't want Prime Flow on, you throw this on. Let's see if our power strength will still be at 500. If it is, it'll be sweet. Nope, it's at 480. But then, that's only because this is at 7. Let's increase that to 9. 9, test that out. 500. Beautiful. Beautiful. That means it could take level 80 to 100 and kill him with 3 slashes at 500. Maybe 4 because before it was 500 and something something. Um, but now we could do 3 to 4 slashes on level 80s to 100 enemies. Um, I, I believe it's 3 to 4 slashes on level 80 enemies. And maybe about 7 slashes to on level, level 100 enemies. 7 to 8 slashes on level 100 enemies. With this, it's good. This is a good build. This is a very good build. At 200 power strength, um, 175 efficiency, 122 duration, um, which gives your drain 0 0.65, yeah, 0 0.63 to point to 3.75, which will be standard regardless if you add more duration. You add more duration, it won't change that from what it is. We test that before in this video. And now you have an extra capacity that if you former, give yourself to unperformer, this capacity will increase. It's at two now because these aren't unperformers, these have all been formed out here. But you always want to leave these to be umbers, so you could put actually, you want to leave three to be umbers, you want two vitalities, um, one umbra vitality, one umbra fiber, and one umbra intensifier. So you need three umbers for this Warframe to get the most out of your strength, your health, and your armor build. And then you have an extra slot you can put on for whatever you want. Let's say you want to put on one of her augmentation mods, um, which is Eternal War. You can leave this slot completely empty. It doesn't have to belong to any school. In fact, I suggest you do that. Leave this one slot completely empty. Make all these slots have the specific schools that I, I show you. And make sure this one isn't regular intensifier. Make sure this one is umber intensifier. So you have three umber intensifier formers you need for this Warframe. And you have one Matarize school you need here, one Naramon you need here, and then two, I mean one uh, uh, Vazarin, that's the name of this school for, for this one, Naraminded, and two Naramons, which is this school for Streamline and um, Fleeting Expertise. And if you want, you don't have to make fleeting expertise all the way up. If you want extra duration, you could keep that son of a bitch down. Well, I don't want to say it that way. But you could keep that down to about halfway. Not the way I have it. You could even keep that to like halfway. You don't have to give it all the points. And then you could give all the points to streamline. So streamline could be maxed out to nine. And you could have fleeting up to the amount you want without taking away from the duration. As long as you could get to 75. You can increase it and keep increasing it until it hits the 175 without even being maxed out to where it is. You can max this one out, but you could keep this one low so you could keep more duration. So this is good. You can lower this. Uh, you don't have to give this this many um, slots. And you can max this one out, and then you get even more duration if this is lower and this one is maxed out, maybe 130. But this is this is a good bill right here. This is a very good bill. As you see, we tested against high level, level 80 to 100 enemies, didn't die. And once I felt I was about to die, I threw on my fourth. Still was able to tank bullets. The drain was low. It took a while for them to to, to kill me. Um, if I do want to keep it on for a very long time, like more than 60 seconds, what you would do is throw in Prime Flow here. Or you would leave the slot open, just like I said, and put Prime Flow here. A prime floor here uh, all right. a prime floor here 
and this will now be 160 at 175. Let's see what the drain is. The drain went up. You don't want that. So you need that streamline. Um, you need streamline with the fleet and expertise. You want it to be 175. That's what you want. And but because um, I don't have the umbra formers to put here, these slots are empty right now. They're not like these ones that are lighting up at the side. You need three umbra formers. And once these are all umbra formed out, just like these ones are, like you see the little school at the side. Once these have their little school glowing up at the side, like this one, and the rest of these ones glowing up at the side, once the umbras have all the slots they need, you'll then have enough capacity to throw in that streamline or to have streamline in without prime flow on um, just to put that in there and then you'll have the one empty slot for each warframe because at any time you'll want to enjoy the experience of warframe and use one of the augmentation mods if you have all your slots fill up with a different school It'll be difficult for you to put on your augmentation mod because you don't have enough capacity. So you want at least one slot open with enough capacity of nine for here. So that's what you want. You want at least nine remaining for an empty slot. You need nine remaining for an empty slot. You need a capacity of nine for an empty slot that doesn't that has no school. That it just looks like the symbol, but it has no little thing at the side right here. So you need that extra nine. So if you can get all these to be forming out and this to be an empty slot, we could throw in any mod, any mod whatsoever at all here to enjoy the experience of this Warframe while still maintaining 175, while still maintaining good duration and at the same, same time still maintaining 0 0.65 to negative, to negative 3.75 drain, which is good. and never dying in mission because you have high armor, high health, and the she, she's not a shield warframe so you don't have to give a crap about shield, she's not a shield warframe. The shield is just there so she doesn't get one shot at when she fights fight big boys. You get one one or two shots from a big boy and then you turn on your fourth powers and then you kill him and then turn off your power and then your shield recharges and once you get a, one shot again to knock down your shields you have like a couple of seconds to turn on your fourth ability to kill that person, turn back off your shield. The shield is just there as an indicator that you're about to die. So once that shield goes down, turn on your fourth, kill whoever you need, and then call it a day. Now at the side for arcanes, what you need are melee arcanes. This is eruption, you don't really need this arcane. What you need is arcane strike. Like basically one I have one right here, Arcane Strike. Right here. It says on hit eight percent chance for three hundred um thirty percent attack speed to melee weapon for nine seconds and then increase it says ten percent chance to forty percent meal and then increase again to thirteen percent chance to fifty percent meal um attack speed to melee and so on and so forth. So what you want for Valkyrie only as your arcane is Arcane Energize, and you want this Arcane Strike to be maxed out. So there's two Arcanes you want on. You want this to be maxed out so you can increase the 15% chance for 60% attack speed. You need this to increase your attack speed if you're doing melee attacks. Or another mod that increase, um, or another Arcane to increase melee attack. So we're going to look for that other, uh, see if I have any other melees. The arcanes. This is warmth. This is victory for headshots. This is trickery for invisibility. This is for more armor. This is for art gun. This is for speed. This is for shotgun. Um, this is for elemental resistance towards toxic. This is for primary damage towards um, primary weapons. This is for five percent chance for vampire. Okay. Precision, this is for pistol, this is for magnetism, this is for pistola, pistol, uh, this is for this is reload speed, this is sniper weapons, this is for protection against ice, this is for knocking enemies down, this is for healing from radiation procs, uh, 
this is what they're affecting, deflecting bullets, which is completely garbage. We've used them many times. Um, this is 100% chance of this parkour. I don't even know why they have this. How many people actually do parkour damage while they're parkouring? Hardly anybody. Um, Alright, and this is for... Well, let me see. 100% chance for percent parkour velocity. So basically, aim glad speed. Or just to do a, a parkour faster. Which makes no sense. And nobody really cares about parkour. Alright, and this one is on primary weapon kill. 5% chance of 50% melee damage. Alright, on primary weapon kill. So, uh, this one can be considered good. But the thing is, you will have to get off a of primary weapon damage chance on a primary weapon damage. And you don't really want to depend on another weapon to give your attack power for your melee to switch when you're doing nothing but melee, so that's not that great. Um, this one is Arcane Bodyguard, 6% uh, kills with the companion, no. Um, Arcane uh, Damage, Wall Latching, no. Um, pistol, no. Agility, uh, Velocity, no. Armor, uh, so on and so forth. Primary weapons on crit hits, uh, primary uh, crit hits again, and we. All right, so I don't have another. You know, I have strike, so right now I'm going with strike. I'm pretty sure there's another arcane for increasing melee damage amount, but for right now strike is what I'm going with. So the main ones you want to go with is arcane strike for more attack speed to get you 50 15 percent chance. You want to max this out to get 15 percent chance for every. Every 60 seconds, you get 15% chance for arcane. So basically, every minute, you get 15% chance to get more um, attack speed. And uh, where it says arcane eruption, you don't want arcane eruption, you want arcane energized. Because this is an energy draining warframe, you want to always have arcane energized for this specific warframe. Because it drains energy. So if you get a full amount of energy from 100% energy chance, that's what arcane gives once you max it out. You have now full up your arcane, I mean your energy slot by the benefits of arcing energize if you put it here. Arcing energize here, arcing strike here, and you're good to go. And with this build and corrosive projection on your weapon, see because once you go for melee kill to an enemy at close quarters combat, you're within range. This 34% um, chance range is real shitty. But most of the times your enemy is going to be standing right in front of you. So they will get the effect of corrosive projection. So see, um, duration range is 8.5. That means you really have to be close to your enemy, basically on him, in front of him, in order for that effect to work. But that's the whole point of her ability, is to get up close and personal. She's not doing the AOE effect for an enemy that's standing far from her, or even someone far from her. She has to get close to the enemy, do her kills on them right in front of them, or at least get her effect off on them while she's hitting them, and then get their kills. So that's why this is good with her um, while she's in close quarters combat. You don't really need range with her if she's doing close quarters combat, but you do need minus 80% armor with her. So this is the build you want to go for with um, Valkyr. And I think I'll close it off on this video, because the prior video was already one hour long. This is an hour and 30. So right now what I'll do is, I won't close it out. I'll go for another 30 minutes in this video. Hopefully it doesn't crash. And what I'll do is just do my dailies and use, um, and just do random stuff with this uh, Warframe. In fact, I won't do random stuff with this Warframe. I already said this Warframe is necessary to tank, to recover, and to kill. So you know basically all this Warframe can do. She can destroy anything. So what I'll do right now, since I need to farm for certain resources, I'll go to another Warframe. In fact, I'll just have fun and enjoy um, myself in the next 30 minutes with a farming Warframe on our favorites of mine. I really need to learn how to do certain things in uh, Warframe. There's certain things I, I know how to do very well on certain Warframes I know how to do very well. But there's still certain Warframes that I still need to work on. I'm pretty, I've played this game for like a good six years now, so I understand how the mechanics of all these Warframes work. And when I have certain things at the side, I don't really need 
I don't want to use them again. I decide to mess around. But if I am going to a tutorial, I'll tell people how to do it. I'll tell them exactly what um, if you want to take a picture of this, you want to record this, and want to go forward with this. This is good for when you're farming, just for the purpose of farming. And don't pay attention to our kings, that's not necessary. But this is what you need for this Warframe. Since his drain comes from, um, uh, not from his energy, but from his health, I gave him more health here. But he's mostly for the purpose of farming resources, so you need the maxed out range of 280. So, not only helpful to yourself, but to your team as well for Necros. So, I'm going to have just fun with Necros from now on. <clears throat> since there's not much I can say on Valkyrie anymore um, other than how to use our ability in in, um, in mission actually maybe I should yeah maybe I should just do that real quick I haven't really focused on any of our abilities other than the second and the fourth ability I didn't speak on the first and the third so I'm going to do that uh, where's fucking park our best ability in this game is her fourth because it keeps her from dying. But her second ability is also her second best because it rallies everyone and gives them increased boost of speed and increase decrease in speed for your enemies. But this is only for range builds, not for the one I have right now. This is not that important. It's kind of useless, but if you're traversing from, from one area to the next and you want to get there faster. Like, I mean, from a real fast far place. Like, say you have 280 power range. If you throw this whip all the way across the map, you will get to the other side of the map with that whip. Or if an enemy is extremely far away, you want to take him out silently without causing an alarm towards anyone else. You use our first ability and pull them towards you and kill them right in front of you. Or if that enemy, like, say, a boss or something, is kicking everyone's ass and you want to keep them away from you your allies from dying use that first ability. It's really pointless beyond the fact of getting to a location fast and pulling enemies out of harm, which nobody really does that anyway. Um, third ability, which is uh, um, Bakir unleash her shield, stuns and damage enemies after her, which is not only does the stun ability towards her um, enemies and uh, uh, that keeps them away but this also kind of uh, keeps her alive at the same time because once they're stunned um, you get a damage multiplier increase towards all enemies because they're in a stun state it's kind of like a sleep state you can do quick executions by using this ability and it does have a knockdown effect um, like the fourth ability you use this in emergency situations when you know her use your fourth but if her shields are up use your third like say enemies are surrounding the ally or you're trying to revive um, but you forgot to use your fourth and then you do your, uh, you just do a quick stun and then you revive them with the amount of energy you have left you need to revive and before they get out of the uh, stun ratio your ally is reviving Alright, so the the dropping dropping in frames. So the drops the drops are about to start. Alright, so the drops are starting. Drops are about to start. Um Yeah. So I'm I'm pretty sure I'm gonna probably crash another time. Um not too far from now, maybe in the next fifteen minutes happen again so if it happens again I'll just end this video so I'll continue on for where I am right now and I'll see how things go if it crashes in the next 10 to 15 minutes I'll just end this video here and then upload this onto the YouTube as the last video Tenno, that's about it balance of power um, continues to shift navigation is marked with new and then close out. but that's pretty much all I need to speak on her and I'll use her in mission and if it crash while in mission I'll just not do the mission. I mean, not make another video. Just move forward and 
that's it. To Horizon Zero Dawn. Hopefully, I'll be able to play Horizon Zero Dawn later on tonight. If I can, I'll just have to do it in the early morning tomorrow morning. As if I wake up early enough to do it in the morning. If not, I'll just have to do it during the time period where uh, my network is not bugging out. Right there's not too much network traffic. So we'll see where it goes from there. Uh, I already have this on. Do I already have this on? Yeah, I already have it on. Why am I carrying the Baker Hack gun anyway? From, from. Let's see. So, my final run for this probably just be a 10 minute video. And yeah, probably even less than 10 minutes, probably five. But I just want to make sure I say what I had to say about her. I'm test her on one last time in mission. Flash and bite. Three, three, the day is won, three, three, not with a strike to the heart, but right, a hundred cuts about it. Right, so Later. I just, just like three high random, three boss missions, just around the boss missions. Random boss missions. And I should switch to steel power. Uranus. Yeah, I went to Uranus. I was taking the Uranus path because I needed to get to Ophelia. Um, the sector is under control. I want to get to Resistance Neptune, so. crushed. Troops begin optimizing the local workforce. Let's try this out. Let's see if anyone's playing Steel Path. No, no one. Uh, no, no one is. out those first and you know, um, third abilities and explain it. I mean self-explanatory what they are so I'll just I'll just do a mission and just use it and show it I don't really need higher high level I'll just do a boss I'll just do a boss as well do a random boss 
Um, Pony or Impossible, I'm still bad. I just do it random. Normal level you ran as boss. Um, where is he? Remember where he is. Where are you hiding? Did you change it? That much on camera. Um, I wonder why it's always difficult for me to see where the boss is. You really gotta work on just showing where the boss is. You know, I know they have the symbols on the map, but. It's just not showing here. It's usually a crown symbol. Represent the boss. See, it doesn't say each planet has a boss. No. Oh, there it is. It does, it's so damn small, it's like hard to see. You really gotta figure out what you're doing. Once you roll over it, or, or see it on the map, it has to have a certain indication, maybe a color Front back, you're nothing if not predictable. I bet your advisors paid you to hide Animos somewhere defensible and undetectable. But you had to show it off, didn't you? As an investor, I must say, I don't approve. Let's go on the offensive. Glast? You're the shadow investor? You ingrate. You could have had everything. And now you seek to ruin your mentor's hard work? Your hard work? I didn't design Animo to be a weapon, and I would have never disabled its governor. You never did have vision. On the contrary, I envision this whole venture will come crashing down around you. Disabled Ambulus and upload this protocol.
Power drop ship response times are second to none, ensuring prompt delivery in mission critical roles. Team down there to pick that ambulance up. Don't let her go to waste. Whatever you do, don't let them fix that ambulance. Fire the artillery. Anything go to waste. Everything I own, I built, worked my way to the top of the board from nothing. You? You create nothing. You earn nothing. You deserve nothing. <laughs> Investment. I can keep throwing ambulance at the Tenno all day. Fire artillery! Scatter those stainless steel rats! Thank <laughs> you. 
You made your fortune on the backs of others, Freud. Your hard work is their hard work. You let the burden swing down while the credits trickle up. All we need is one more ambulance to be returned to the dropship. away from me. They will not win. They've not earned it. I know this for certain, Freud. You've earned this. I'm sorry, animal. Execute the protocol. Walkers incoming. What was that? My ship? Ah, eject the bridge module. Eject it now. Once my pride and joy has been destroyed, I abandoned the project when I fled the corpus. I should have known it was too powerful to leave in their hands. The Amulus proxies still exist, and they are no doubt formidable, but the threat of their superintelligence. that. That was Val Karen in that show. Now if you've seen um, based on where to where I'm standing right now from this, uh, this little statue right here the statue decoration to where my um, arsenal is. And that says uh, at least, yeah not even that that far. I'll say if I stand right here and that's as far as it go at 34 from right here from this one to where my arsenal that's as far as 34 range can go Valkyr which is not bad that means there will be 
that far in front of you and it won't go that far so she has good range for her first ability even though it's incredibly small to traverse from one Operator, location to the next. system needs you so you're not have you to worry too mission? much about range with her um it's not that great but for long distances no or to pull an enemy that's not too far away for you towards you or to get away from an enemy um, without going into long distance a 34 is great um, as you see the stun ability which was the third ability I did was basically to stun them and stun them for about a good um, five seconds before the dog killed them um, so I didn't have to do anything I had to stand there and then it just went to work so let's see the duration period for that and duration period for that stun was um, wasn't even duration period it was, um, it was an instant stun I guess it's based on power strength um, up down strength was 1.975 um, so once you hit them with the stun ability they can even be knocked down to the floor Instantly die, or it could just be standing in place with the ones I've ever seen before. So, what happened? These enemies were strong, um, so instead of them falling backwards, like you see in the little screen right here, they all fall all the way back. Um, she wasn't able to do that, but she was able to stun them in place, um, and that effect is based on power strength. So she doesn't have a duration for the knockdown um, but the strength capabilities um, the multiplier of the knockdown ability is um, damage is 6.91 that's based on power strength and the knockdown strength is increased to 1.95 but it'll be um, smaller if you don't have enough power strength which means um, the enemy won't be knocked down if your power strength is or at least stun for the amount of seconds you want them to be stunned for. If it's below, you know, let's say 0 0.02 something, it'll be stunned for like 3 seconds or even less, and then they'll attack you. But with a 1.95, you will get them for about a good 5, five seconds, about 5 to 6 seconds before your dog or whatever pet kills them. And that's that. So, the duration period. It's good for Warcry. I, I think this is the only ability that requires duration. Everything else requires range, damage, and strength. So she's a range Warframe, damage Warframe, and strength Warframe. So yeah, it's mostly about range for her and strength. But if you don't really want to help her, Strength, power strength, and efficiency. That's the three things you need to remember with regards to this Warframe. And that's all you really need to know with regards to this Warframe. Not so much range, and not so much, um, yeah, not so much traversing with range. Everything else, you need to worry about with her. And like I said before, um, these are the abilities right here. These ones. If you have these ones on, you're fine. You're fine. Because with this, you have a decent amount of health, 850. She's not a shield warframe, so even if you increase her shield by a vast amount, probably won't even exceed 500. You're lucky if you get her up to 600 shields. So she's not a shield warframe, but I didn't even worry about that. She's an armor warframe, that's why she has shit ton of armor right here. And these are the mods you want on. She's close quarters combat, so you need project, um, of course, the projection to kill enemies faster. Close to UI, you do a slash. Of course, the projection on them, as you see, with a range of 34, you can grab an enemy from a range of 34 around her. Not too far away, but the effects of that 18% reduction in all armor is helpful towards whatever enemy. Mostly works on Grenier. That's why I'm showing Grenier in the picture here, because they carry armor, the corpses carry mostly shields. 
so it won't work that well on corpus enemies like robots and forth but it will does some type of base armor reduction effect if the enemy has an armor and corpus enemy do have armor it's just not that high I didn't really need to use this against robots but uh, you know it works if it works if they have armor on them it takes that away from them but basically you want to always have that on if you're fighting any armor that has uh, any enemy that has armor on which most enemies in this game will and but every other mod I have on right now is used to have one as an essential in this empty slot right here if you have that as for a rainy day you don't really need to put in the narrow mod but that's it yeah I'm sorry for you joining man you're joining at the last minute I have to watch the video I already did a full th um, 30 minutes of it I'm about to close out right now if you want to watch from the beginning you'll see me do, uh, doing the ambulant mission using Valkyrie's first and third ability um, I thought the range was going to be garbage but it's decent to our amount that if I was to um, stand from where I am right now at the arsenal to past the dog right here and right here that's about the range of the 34 that I have on for, um, this is the shortest range 30 to 30 30 ranges here if an enemy is standing at the arsenal is here 34 will be about here and the video will show that the enemies were standing by, I'll say about right here in front of me so I say either I'm wrong about this being 34 but and right about this being 34 so where the dog is towards the arsenal that's 34 so if an enemy is not standing too far from me you can't bring them within range, but I'm pretty sure they were further than that. So in the video, it will show it if you replay the video. So 34 is not that bad if an enemy is um, not too far away from you, like here. You can get an enemy that's running and shooting here, here, and enemy is not too far from you. You can still grab them, or you can still use your rip line to get towards them if you don't want to pull them towards you. And the stun ability worked for about five seconds with the ability strength of 200 because the stun ability um, here doesn't really have a duration period like war cry, like a war cry it has uh, a damage capability set within uh, within it with a multiplier so it's stun capability if you stun an enemy it will fall completely back like you see in the picture and go off the ledge or they just fall down to the ground if the enemy is super strong, they'll just be stunned in place for about a few seconds. And based on your power strength, it will depend on how long they're stunned in place for a few seconds, because it's not a duration period that they'll be stunned for. It'll be based on how strong your attack is and how strong the enemy is. If the enemy is weak, they'll always fall to the ground. If the enemy is strong, they'll always be stunned in place. And how powerful your strength is depending on how many seconds they're going to be stunned in place so I stunned them in place when I was in the ambulance mission and they were stunned for about a good six six seconds and then I just allowed my dog to do the killing for me I didn't even kill them the dog did the killing and they all died and so that's good six seconds is good to kill enemies that aren't lower 80 to 100 and if you're doing level 1 to 50 with six seconds you could just let your pet or your something will kill all the enemies um three of them that were in front of me so three maybe the fourth would have been unstunned by then but you would still be able to kill three enemies that are level one to thirty easy and level thirty to about fifty um you might have to intervene and then help the dog out but uh you know if they're not that powerful they're level one to level forties um enemies that, to let your pet do all the killing on the stand there. So the stun ratio for this 1.975 knockdown strength will just keep an enemy in place if they're level 30 to 40. Um, if they're weak ones, um, like say if they're level 10 enemies, they'll always fall down. Or 20 enemies, they'll always fall down. But if they go to 30 and above, they'll stand up. Unless they're exhumous level 20, they'll probably still stand up, but I got uh, I tested on enemies in the 30s, and yeah, they stand up, unless I'm wrong about the location I went to, so let me double check that location.
Because here in Pluto, an enemy level for Pluto are level 35 to 45. Finding Ambulus. So, you will always get a stun effect if you have a power strength of 200 towards these enemies and they will always be stunned in place, they will fall back. But that's, but that's it for this video. If um, anyone who wants to watch this video can replay it. And um, yeah, that'll be it for me. Hey, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? So, I'm about to cancel out of this and then probably go into Horizon Zero Dawn later um, in the next um, 30 minutes. I'll probably stay up late and play that. But for right now, this was just a quick view of how to use the Valkyrie Warframe. I made a private video that was an hour long about this, but then it crashed on that one. And now I'm just making uh, finishing touches for this one. And it's telling how it worked in the mission that I did to how it worked in the mission. So you could go with the build that I just showed um, if you want to ever play Warframe. How, how, uh, how to use this Warframe. And this is the energy training Warframe. So you would go with this build right here. This, 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 this. And you would leave the slot open so that when you want to select any mod of any different type of school, you would put it in this slot here. The goal is to always have at least a minimum of nine capacity. I have two now. You need nine. And once you have nine, you leave the slot open. You don't have it a school like I do have a school here. I made this the normal school, the minus sign. I shouldn't have done that. I should have just left it completely empty without that little sign at the end there. But what you want to do is left, leave it completely empty. And you can fill up these with the different school types here and have these mods on. So these mods should be on. And then there should be one empty slot without any school affiliation. That way you have the power strength you need, which is 200. I'm going to put it here. Power strength you need, which is 200. You have a duration of 122. And you have efficiency 175. Your range is decent enough because it's a frontal melee combat. Uh, yeah, well, that's how it works. So just go over the prior video I did for this one uh, when it comes to this Warframe. And I watched the video of how this works in action. And also, um, understand how efficiency and everything works in Warframe. If you have 175 efficiency, you will get that that's the maximum amount of efficiency you need in any Warframe. So this Warframes are based on duration, efficiency, and power strength. This Warframe uses up all three, both duration, efficiency, and power strength as well as range. The range is not needed for this specific Warframe. This is a frontal combat Warframe. That means it attack the enemy and take the enemy down. It doesn't need to do an AOE effect blast. AOE are for range. If you're doing an AOE damage or AOE buffs to your party, you would want range. Um, this Warframe does not require to do such a thing. And that's it for this video. And if you want to learn more about it, just watch the prior videos um, of this Warframe. And that's all I can say about that. I gotta go. I got stuff I gotta do. And uh, if you want to learn more about different types of Warframes, I have two different videos on this Twitch channel of Warframe. Or you could go on to YouTube and look at um, Mackie Gameplay and check out the different videos from this Twitch uploaded there of different games if you don't want to play Warframe if you want to play one of those games because you find those interesting and I speak a little bit on those and how you could use those in missions if you're new to those type of games but if you're interested in Warframe um, you can go with these different builds I've been speaking of for this type of game but for the moment I'm just going to leave right now I don't want this uh, game to crash again so I'm just going to end this right now and then go on to play Horizon Zero Dawn like probably an hour after this um, or maybe even less maybe like 35-40 minutes and I'll try Horizon Zero Dawn and continue on from the from where I left off in that game um, from the story that's depending on my networking if my networking is good I'll continue, if not if I'm too tired, I'll leave it for tomorrow 